Nick, thanks very much for joining us. Um, a new role there for you at, at Panatoni. Maybe just explain a little bit about that and what the mm. strategy is. Yeah, thank you, Richard. Yes, it's a very exciting opportunity. I've joined um, Panatoni Group to establish and to head up the uh, Panatoni Investment Management Platform. It is a new um, entity. It will be very closely associated with the Panasonic Group, yet completely independent from for decision-making purposes. And the idea here is to broaden the business, to be able to attract different new capital sources um, to the Panasonic platform and ultimately help grow the platform um, accordingly off the back of these new capital sources. And so there'll be more of a kind of um, buy, to, buy to hold, develop to hold yeah. strategy, Nick? That's right. The, as well as these new capital sources, it's also longevity. Uh, the Panasonic business model to date has been very much develop and sell, partnering with investors through that process. But this is very much more, as you say, a develop to hold approach where we'll be looking at longer term investment strategies uh, beyond just the uh, development piece, which has been uh, the key, uh, the linchpin of it over the last uh, years. And let's pick up a little bit on um, the markets. You're looking across Europe, of course. Um, I guess, where do you see the opportunities at the moment and what are the trends driving that? Well, the logistics market remains strong despite the correction we've seen in the capital markets, um, obviously driven by all the interest rates and, and, and all the other macro issues that we've seen. But fundamentally, the logistics sector is still benefiting from a lot of the very high level systemic effects that we have been seeing over the last years, whether this be e-commerce, whether this be changes to supply chains, so all of this is helping push the demand side. There's also, has to be said, the ESG side occupiers are demanding more and more to have the highest quality, greenest buildings to occupy to carry out their businesses in. So from the demand side, modern, well-located and green logistics properties are very, very much in vogue with occupiers and there's really good demand in all the core markets across Europe. Now, adding on to that, the supply side, you, we're seeing more and more resistance to greenfield developments. We're seeing it more and more challenging to be able to find sites um, to be able to build these very large buildings on. It, it, it's an obvious thing. And, and so when you couple together the, the supply constraints and the strong tenant demand, we see that the market is actually very well set. The fundamentals of the logistics market are very well set for the long term. And yes, we're riding through this period of turbulence in the capital markets recently, but fundamentally, we think that the, the income generation prospects of the logistics sector across Europe are very strong. Um, and talking about ESG, you mentioned that there. Is that now a kind of key driver? Do you see a real bifurcation in the market between sustainable assets and those that are, are less sustainable or brown? Yes, absolutely. It's a must-have for occupiers, it's a must-have for investors, it's a must-have for lenders, um, it's a must-have for us. We're in the fortunate position at Panasonic to develop um, all of the stock comes through the Panasonic pipeline. is all obviously developed by Panasonic. Therefore, we can select and choose how we develop. And therefore, the green specifications are becoming more and more um, prevalent and there's more and more of it every, every year. And um, we're seeing that across all markets in Europe. Obviously, some are more advanced than others, but this is a fundamental drive across all these markets that the green specifications are improving year on year on year. Really interesting to see the, the development both of the sector, mm -hmm. but also the strategy there at Panatoni. Thanks very much for joining us, Nick. Thank you, Richard.